Hey guys, welcome to Black Gumbo. We're going to put in a summer crop, but it's a special summer crop. We're not going to eat it. Alright, you see all these tomatoes here that are growing in one of my raised beds. These tomatoes were the plants that were affected by aminopyrrolid poisoning. They're contaminated with uh, what I believe is Grazon, Dow AgroSciences Grazon, which came into my garden in the form of um, hay that had been obviously treated with this stuff. I've got some videos on that and you can research it yourself. But uh, because there's poison in that bed now that affects dicot plants, dichotomous plants like tomatoes and everything I want to grow and everything I want to eat, we need to get that stuff out of there. So to take up the amino pyrrolids, we're going to plant a monocot plant that is not affected by grazon. And the amino pyrrolids will be drawn up into that plant, at least that's our hope, and we'll chop that plant down and that will be a sacrificial crop that we will use to remediate our soil and then uh, come to fall, we'll be able to plant some new crops in there, hopefully we'll be good. Uh, so I'm going to plant corn, and I'm going to go ahead and sow my corn in the midst of my tomatoes now to get a head start. And I'm, I'm keeping those tomatoes in for a, a couple more weeks to see how they do. And uh, I don't know, uh, I might try some of the fruit just to test it, see how it tastes. But uh, for the most part, these plants are not going to produce edible fruit, so we're taking them out. But I'm going to get the corn started now uh, while the tomatoes are still in just to give them a little bit of a head start. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm sowing some corn which is a grass, which is a monocot plant, which is not affected by grazon. Now I've uh, soaked my corn. This is a uh, chapalote corn. Chapalote is a, is a, is a dent corn or a, a flower corn. It's not a sweet corn. And this will come up and we don't really expect to get any corn off of it. If we do, we'll use it for decorations and things like that. But it's hot already. It's a little late in the season. The only reason we're planting this corn is to use it for uh, eliminating our, our our contamination in the garden. So we're going to go and plug these in in a, in a big bunch. Now I'm putting my corn in in a block and I'm planting it inside, you know, within the tomato jungle here. And when I come and pull these tomatoes out, I don't have to worry because I'm just going to cut them down at the, at the soil level and I'm going to leave the roots behind. The roots will rot and decompose in there and be an in-the-ground compost and will actually help to feed those, uh, those corn seeds as they start to come up. So when they emerge in seven to ten days uh, or, or whenever they come up, We'll, we'll look at thinning these uh, tomatoes down and chopping them at the, at the ground. My other variety is this uh, Wade's Giant Indian. It's from Baker Creek. This is a kind of an ornamental looking giant eared corn that has all different kinds of kernels in it. And so we're going to plant this in here. If we get some corn, great. If we don't, it's still going to do its job. literally sowing right next to the stalks of my tomato plants because we're just going to take them down to the ground. Alright, so that's how we're going to remediate our soil. I want to talk about, I want to talk about summer crops. Whoo man, summer's definitely here because it was in the 90s today with about 85% humidity and I nearly died out here harvesting my lawn and working in the compost. But uh, yeah, that's done. I'm gonna be growing some summer crops this year. One of them, one of the crops I like to grow uh, every year is the cowpea. Cowpeas do great in very hot climates and they're also known as southern peas, black-eyed peas purple hole peas, zipper creams, but uh, that's just the beginning, man. There are, there are hundreds of varieties of cow peas, and they're all different colors and different patterns of growth, and usually um, about all of them will grow here in zone 9A. So when it's 100 degrees outside and the cicadas are in the trees uh, 
doing their thing, you can come out and harvest some cowpeas. But uh, cowpeas will grow really well in the heat of summer and they also improve your soil. They shade the soil and, and, and starve out weeds. They are a good mulch when the season's over, you just drop them right there, leave the roots in the ground, drop the, all the chaff right there on the ground, let it rot in place where they make good amendments to your compost. So the cowpea is a great summer crop. Uh, eggplants grow well in the heat. I've got a couple of eggplants in and we're gonna see how they do. Another good crop for our region uh, during the summer is um, squash pumpkins, you know, pumpkin squash. So I've uh, started some winter squash, some moringa pumpkins, and some jarredale pumpkins in a in a in a, a pumpkin pit, a melon pit. You call it whatever you want, but uh, you can see the video on that. Basically, we dug a pit. We put a bunch of really nasty compost down in there, like chicken guts and frozen chicken and scraps from the fridge, uh, unfinished compost. Because the squash in general really doesn't mind growing in compost that's not finished. It can grow in active compost and it can help actually to break down uh, that compost and so we're going to grow some of those um, other crops you can grow in the summer the sweet potato i've never grown sweet potatoes but i've seen sweet potatoes nearly cover an entire house i went over to a house one day with my dad he was visiting somebody and the whole front porch was covered in sweet potato vines and uh, we're not talking about yams we're talking about the traditional orange sweet potato those grow well here um, so yeah, summer's not a time where you just close up shop and go inside. You can at least plant a cover crop of cowpeas over your entire garden and you'll be amending your soil and doing your soil something good. So yeah, that's what we're doing this summer. All right, take a look at that. We have our trellises, we have our cucumbers. They're growing pretty good. Uh, these guys over here were almost destroyed by the spider mites this year. We had spider mites sweep through the whole garden and really knock these guys down. They were, they were doing really well, they were pretty big but the spider mites knocked them back almost to virtually nothing. And the leaves that were there looked pretty sad. So I resisted the urge to pull them out and they fought back. And now we've got them going up these trellises. We've got tons of blossoms on there. So we'll be into some pickles this year. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? We're gonna have plenty of cucumbers off of this, plenty of them. Last year I pickled cucumbers off of three plants and the other three plants I had were a different variety. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five of those plants, maybe six. There might be a volunteer down there. So we'll have plenty of pickles. Folks, if you haven't tasted a fermented pickle, you haven't lived. I also came in and mulched with my homemade mulch and added some side dressing of compost because my one bin from last year that wasn't used up is really doing nice. That's mostly oak leaves and grass clippings. Let me show you what that bin looks like. Look at this stuff. You dig down in here. That is nice compost. And so this has just been sitting here since last year. And I've taken all the dry leaves off the top and used it for mulch. There's still some left. But everything under there, that's about a foot deep, maybe a foot and a half of nothing but solid gold. Great compost, really good thriving living stuff and so this is the compost I'll use this year to side dress our corn when it comes up because corn is a heavy feeder. It's been a hot and humid and sweaty day but uh, man we got a lot accomplished. Thanks for joining me on our garden tour today and looking around and seeing how we're going to remediate this soil. Thanks for subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already we'd really appreciate it it encourages us. Thank you for all the comments we've really enjoyed chatting with you guys this spring and we're going to garden on through the summer and into the fall, and uh, it's going to be a year-round thing from now on. So thanks for following us. Look us up on Facebook. Look us up on Instagram. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.